Hey guys, welcome back to another Sims 4 roofing video. Today we are going to be talking about how to roof decks, porches, patios, what have you. And that's why my house looks kind of silly today, because I wanted to add every possible shape and configuration I could think of. And what are these houses back here? Those are so I can point to them and say, if you're new to building in The Sims 4, check out the video that has this in the thumbnail to learn more about roofing tools, and check out the video that has this house in the thumbnail to learn more about how to use diagonal roofs. So I figured we'd just start with the front door area here and move our way around and I'll talk about how to roof each section of the decking here as well as why I have chosen to roof it that way. Starting here, I just want to have a simple sloping roof basically to protect the door from rain, right? So I did already turn on move objects and now I'm going to turn on the grid and let's see what we can do. I'm probably just going to go for a simple half gable since that will be the easiest. Scale it, drop the pitch. And for style purposes, I'm going to be bringing this eave in, as well as this one. After I add the matching trim and shingles, you can see that it adds a nice little covered area. Super simple, probably the easiest. So let's move on to the hard ones. Now wraparound, dra wraparound decks can get a little tricky, and the best thing you can do for yourself is to make sure that both sides are the same. So you want the front side to be, in this case, three tiles, and the side to be three tiles. This is going to give you the fewest possible issues when it comes to roofing. It may not always be practical or possible, but if it is, definitely go for it, and if it's not, well, we'll talk about that when we get to the back of the build. We're going to start with a half gable. like so, and I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and get rid of this eave as well as this one. Copy, rotate, and place on the rest of your non-corners. And then for the corners, you can use either a half-hipped or a hipped roof, but basically what you want to do is place your roof and extend it to make a square. Your end goal is to get the peak of the roof to line up with the corner of where your roofs intersect. This way, when you drop it down and extend the eave, except for this weird roofing glitch that we're getting right now, it makes a nice seamless corner. You can do the same thing with a half hip roof by placing it, extending it, and dropping it down. This could be a helpful option if you're trying to avoid roofs clipping on the inside, and since these roofs don't overlap, it's also more or less solving our weird roofing glitch that we're experiencing at the moment. I have discovered that the roofing glitch also goes away if you don't have your roof pitched down all the way, so I pitched it all the way down, it glitches, bring it up one, and it doesn't glitch anymore. As you can see, that makes a nice wraparound deck roof. Now let's go over this round part here. Shockingly, I'm going to use a circle. Bring it to size, bring out the eaves, and since we know the rest of our roof is pitched at full down plus one up, or however you want to say that, that's what we're going to do here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a valley here, which if you're looking at roof and it doesn't look quite right, you might be finding some valleys that you're not even aware of. So if your roof looks weird, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow, so come back tomorrow for a first installment of your roof looks weird and how to fix it, you're going to want to get rid of these valleys. We're going to do that here by grabbing a diagonal gabled roof, bring this into the build, and we want to line this part of the roof up either with eaves or without them with the center of the circle. This way when we match the pitch you can see it lines up perfectly and you get a nice seamless look on the side. You can use the circle roof plus the half gable or half hipped or whatever you need for any variation of the circle whether it be a full circle, half circle, oval, whatever it is, um, this is what you're going to want to use. I know that's like breaking news, but hey, that's what we're doing over here. Now let's talk about diagonal intersections. Remember, if you just have a whole diagonal roof, you can use this exact same technique just with diagonal roof pieces. But if you have this diagonal intersection here, you're going to have to get a little bit creative. So let's talk about how to fix this one. My go-to would be the octagon because it already has that exact same angle in it, right there as you can see. Um, the trick though is because you're going to have to make this roof so large that it may not be suitable for every build. As you can see, it's clipping out on this side. So if you had a really big deck, this would work great, right? It lines right up and then you just add another half gable right over here, but it's not quite going to work for us today. So let's talk about another way we could do this. You could use a diagonal half gabled roof. We've just made sure that the end of the roof extends into the build and the outside lines up with the rest of your roof. Why would you use the octagon instead of this? Honestly, because sometimes getting the pitch exact between the straight roofs and the diagonal roofs can be a pain in the butt, 
or there might be some sort of invalid diagonal intersection depending on the shape of your build. And then for this portion of the roof, you would simply be copying and placing another gable and then covering up this gap with another hip roof or half hip. Again, the name of the game is to get this peak of the roof to line up as exactly as possible with the intersection of your roofs so that when you bring it down, it lines up just fine. Basically an octagon without an octagon. Now here's the part that I promised, which was what to do when you have one side of your wraparound deck not quite line up with the other side. In this case we have three and four, but this works for any sort of disparate ratio. So grab your half-hipped roof and you're going to want to align it so that the hipped portion is facing out, away from the main build. Once again, getting that corner to sort of line up with your roof. Now I did forget that roofs get roof fences, so that's a little sad. Uh, but you can kind of fix this by pushing it back one and then extending the eave. And there you go. We'll leave it like that. That works. While this does line up really nicely here, it has a little bit um, of... It's not really a glitch, right? But not quite a perfect corner right here. However, this will easily let you add, if you needed more roof, um, any sort of half gable roof. You'd be able to match the pitch just fine and the only tell that you're going to see that the roof didn't quite perfectly line up is this little corner area right here. And that concludes the what to do with a wraparound deck including but not limited to round bits, diagonal bits, and pieces that don't quite match up. Now for this guy you think we might just be doing the same thing we did on the front and while you could definitely do that I'm going to show you a slightly different way of roofing um, a deck that could come in handy. The main thing this is going to do is give the illusion of your roof having different roof levels, um, which can just add a little bit of depth. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grab the half gable, and I'm actually going to make this roof only cover half to begin with. And then after dropping it down, I'm going to hold shift and pull out this eave to match up with the end of the balcony. I don't know if you can quite tell, but from the side, you can see that it just it looks a little bit different and I think that putting in some variety in your roof pieces, um, this gives the illusion of it being a little bit lower and it can just be nice. Basically a variation on your basic roof. Now I don't even know what you'd call these little decks hanging off the side of a building, but they're pretty common in older style builds such as a Victorian, a Chateau, something like that. And so I wanted to give a couple of op options on how to roof these. Now of course mine are um, rectangular, but you could totally do these as partial octagons or a semicircle and pretty much the same thing. You just want to get a roof piece shape that matches up with this. I thought it'd be nice to start with a gable like we have on the rest of the build and I could just copy this one over here and you can see we can line it up and it works just fine. However, we could also push this in, push this in, and then again holding shift simply bring this eave out to cover. And that gives us a nice sort of layered roof look while still protecting this all from the rain. A half-hipped could also be really nice. Again, making it look like we have a little bit more interest and detail going on up there. Or I've even copied this roof up here to give a final option. As always, throw down some columns to finish up your roof, make sure it looks good and supported. Hopefully these porch roofing tips gave you some helpful insight on how to handle various shapes, sizes, directions, etc. of porches, decks, and patios. If you want to learn more about roofing, check out the bottom card. That's a playlist of all the roofing tutorials I have on the channel so far. And if you're just interested in more building tutorials in general, you're going to want to check out the top card. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this content helpful. Comment more tutorial ideas down below if you're interested. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!